I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy, and we've got an update video for you. So in the past, we did a video on point-to-site VPN connections, and there have been some recent changes to scale and type of connections that we can create. So we're going to cover that today as I reconfigure my point-to-site VPN. So if you haven't done so already, please do click on the subscribe button. It really does help us out at the Azure Academy and lets YouTube know that you're interested in our content. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. You know, I couldn't find uh, another video on YouTube that had open VPN for an Azure Virtual Network Gateway, so I thought I'd make one. And please do give us some comments below on things that you'd be interested in or any questions that you have. So jumping over to the Azure documentation, since we're talking about VPNs, we'll go to products and then scroll down to networking and then go to the VPN gateway. Now, the reason why I've thought about this is because I was in a conversation with some of my clients and they were talking about their point to site VPNs that they had for several different customers, some of them as large as a uh, thousand or so. And they were looking to replace their VPN for their users to go with a more Azure based strategy. So because I had a video on point to site already, I directed them to there and then they were asking me about this thing called OpenVPN. Well, honestly, I hadn't heard of OpenVPN until they had asked, so I said, I'm not sure, and so I looked here in our documentation under the gateway SKUs, and yes, we do support OpenVPN. So for those of you who don't know, OpenVPN is a open source VPN tool that functions as a server and client. So if you wanted to, you could deploy a full OpenVPN server in Azure, and then run that as your server instead of deploying an Azure Virtual Network Gateway, and then use Open VPN as a client for all of your machines to connect to. However, you can also do this with the Azure VPN gateway directly. Now, the benefit of this over SSTP, which I have been using for a while, is you can only make 128 simultaneous connections over SSTP. With OpenVPN, we now support up to a thousand VPN clients. Now, on that note, that will be a thousand under an aggregate gateway limit of 1.25 gig per second. One other thing to keep in mind, if you need to go bigger than 1000 simultaneous connections or 1.25 gig, you really should look at the Azure Virtual WAN. And if you're interested in Virtual WAN, give me some comments down below and we'll create a video on Virtual WAN for you. Uh, one other thing to note here is, see we have gateway SKUs one, two, and three, and then we have gateway SKUs AZ one, two, and three. So the VNet gateway supports Azure availability zones if the region that you're deploying in also supports zones. Okay, so not every region supports zones yet, but it will be coming eventually to most every region. And if you can, then I suggest that you deploy your VPN gateway in availability zones, even if the workload you have today is not really zone aware. And the reason for that is it will future proof you. Okay, so the situation that I'm in, if we go back to the Azure portal, is I have my gateway here that I've been using for a while, and this supports my site to site VPN as well as point to site. And I can go into my gateway here and I could reconfigure configure it for OpenVPN, which is what we'll do today. However, if I go here under configuration, we can see that I am using the gateway SKUs, not the availability zone SKUs. That means if I want to convert this to be availability zone aware, I have to tear down this VPN and rebuild it. Today, for time's sake, I am not going to do that. That is what you will have to do if you want to move to zones in the future. So I suggest you build with zones today. So let's go under our point to site configuration and we can see our on-prem address range listed here, as well as the type of tunnel that we have and what our certificate is. So this method now of switching over from SSTP over to OpenVPN is the one that is recommended. Now you can also go with Ike V2 OpenVPN, but I would stay away at this point from SSTP altogether. OpenVPN will scale better as well as have better support going forward. So I'm going to just use OpenVPN directly and then I will hit save. While that is saving, let's take a look at something in PowerShell. 
So if you saw our point to site video originally, then this uh, will look familiar, but this has been updated to now include OpenVPN support. And I'll show you the updates here. And we're also gonna issue ourselves a new root and client certificate, and then we will be downloading a few tools. So first I will kick off this script just by hitting the run button and we'll let this go. So I will enter my password for my cert with a private key. That'll start doing some stuff. While it is, let me explain what we've got. So first we're going to be creating a self-signed root certificate. Now, let me stop you right here. If you are using this for production, if you're using this as a corporation, please do not use a self-signed certificate. Okay, get one from the online certificate authority. I am just using this for a lab and testing purposes, so I'm okay using a self-signed certificate. After you have your certificate in whatever way you get it, so since I'm doing self-signed, I'm creating the root cert, and then I'm creating the client cert, then I'm gonna export those to a specific location on my system, which is gonna be C temp, and then in there, I'm also exporting the cert with the private key. Okay, and that's so I can use it on other machines. Then we'll be downloading a tool called OpenSSL. And when we use this tool, I also need to update my profile in order to include OpenSSL and a certain config file. And then we'll be doing the dot profile here, which will reload my profile in PowerShell so I can use them. And then we'll also be using a system called Chocolatey. Now, Chocolatey is kind of like a package manager tool that runs across many different systems, including Windows through PowerShell. PowerShell, and we're going to be using Chocolatey to install OpenSSL over the internet. So this section of code here will be to install Chocolatey, and there is the place where we'll be downloading that from if you want to go and check that out first before you run this. So once Chocolatey gets installed, it will then install the OpenSSL client, and then it will download a config file. Okay, and that config file is what we're going to use to be able to extract all of the keys that we need. After that, we'll be downloading the OpenVPN client and storing all of these things in our C temp directory. And then we'll be running OpenSSL with these arguments in the C temp location. So if you're using a different location, you need to update these paths. And then with that, we'll uh, extract all of the key information and stick it into a file. And we'll be looking at that in a second. And then it's going to install OpenVPN through silent install. Okay, so all of these processes processes have been done and that was what was going here on the left side so this happened in about a minute okay so that's why I scripted it all out for you so you can just run this this script link will be on the bottom of the description so you can get it off my github so when you run the script it will create your client cert root cert a temporary root cert that we're going to extract our key data from and then the client cert with a private key there's the open ssl config file that we downloaded and then there is the open vpn client now one important thing of note is using a open vpn client with the azure virtual network gateway is only supported on version 2.4 or later okay so be sure that you have the right client and then we had our profile and this was where we extracted the key information Okay, so this is a file that we'll come back to in a second. And the first thing we need to do now is take our root cert and we need to paste this into Azure so that we can update our system's root cert in our gateway. So we removed our original cert here and then I'll type in the name of my new root cert and then I'll paste in the cert data and then we hit save. We now need to download our VPN client. So this is what's going to be the package that's customized for our system to use our VPN gateway with OpenVPN. So this is gonna have all the important info that we need. Okay, and there is our file that we downloaded. And if we open up that zip file, we've got in here a few different things. Then we have the important one, the open VPN folder. So if we open this up, it has a VPN config file for open VPN. So let's take this out of here and I'll just leave it here in our temp directory. So we're gonna open this and we're gonna open our extracted key information. So I've just positioned these windows side by side to make it a little bit easier to see. Now the sections that we edit in this file are very, very important, okay? So you have here a root cert that is here along with a pre-shared key that the system has generated for us. Do not touch those at all or anything else in this file except for the client certificate variable 
and the private key variable. Those are the only things that we want to copy out of uh, this other file that we have. So here's my private key and in this case we need to include the end private key and the begin private key as well. So let's copy that and I'll paste that in here for my private key. And then when we scroll down, we see the next section is for our client cert. And we need our begin cert to end cert. And we'll replace that over top of our variable. And then we'll save our VPN config file. So now our VPN config is ready to go. Now, when you have installed the OpenVPN client, you will have now the OpenVPN GUI. So under my start menu here, I've got OpenSSL installed now as well as OpenVPN. And if I run the OpenVPN GUI, then it will first give me this message. This is normal because it's telling you that you do not have a VPN config file. Just hit OK. And then you can see the OpenVPN GUI icon in the taskbar. Now, if we go back to the letter O here to OpenVPN, we can see that there is a folder here for the config file directory. So if we open that and then we paste our VPN config file here, because this is in C program files, which is in a protected directory, you have to hit continue and then it'll copy in your file. Once it is, we can right click on the open VPN client and then hit connect. And in just a few seconds, it will have authenticated our certificate, trade some bytes, and then we get a notice inside our notification center that we are now connected over OpenVPN and what our assigned IP address is. So if I pull up a command prompt and we type IP config, we can see that yes, indeed, we do have an IP address in the same range that we said we would use over Azure, as well as our current local IP address. So let's open up RDP and let's connect to one of my domain controllers in the cloud. And if we open Active Directory, you can see here is the uh, domain controller that we're connected to, msazureacademy.com, which is up in Azure, connected to my Azure Active Directory account. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the OpenVPN tool and how to get it set up. And again, my script will be available on my GitHub, so you can just download that and run that for easy testing. You don't have to do anything uh, except just run the script. It'll set up everything for you. And then you can run OpenVPN based on the Azure Virtual network gateway which will give you up to a thousand simultaneous connections and if you need to go bigger than that then I'd suggest you look at the Azure virtual WAN so again if you haven't done so already please do click on the subscribe button as well as leave us some comments below and if you like this video give us a thumbs up and if you have any other videos that you'd like us to make just give us some comments down below and we'll be happy to look into that and as always thanks for joining us today and happy learning